So there were some bills that were passed that, I'm not gonna mix words, it has made it extremely difficult for schools and has limited the flexibility for schools in regards to how we operate during these very challenging times. We mentioned Senate Bill 704. This is the bill that requires all schools to have five-day face-to-face instruction. Requires. That's not hybrid. A hybrid model, by definition, is considered virtual. So we move to the next proviso, 1.103, which says only 5% of a district's population can be in a virtual online setting. So last year when we had a hybrid, we had one group going on Monday and Tuesday, the next group going on Wednesday and Thursday, and the other group that was going on Monday and Tuesday, they were virtual Wednesday and Thursday, that's considered hybrid. That number goes into that 5%. So if we exceed that 5%, then 47.22% of our funding for every student over is taken. So when people are calling me and say, well, Dr. Foster, I want my child in online. I was like, well, we can't. We're limited. Now I'll say this. Hats off to these gentlemen over here. When this was going through, they were asking for feedback. And I know they fought it to the nail. Nevertheless, we're in the circumstance that that read. So I want to commend them for, first of all, having the responsibility to say, tell me how will this affect our students in North And saying, okay, I'm gonna go fight. I can respect the individuals that come back and say, well, we gave it our best fight, so now what can we do to still provide health and safety for our students? And finally, the most recent mass mandate that came out June 25th, remember, our plan was approved June 15th. So in our original plan, we were requiring all masks for students requiring all masks for visitors, requiring masks on buses. That was in our original plan. But this proviso, which was attached to an appropriation bill in the budget, changed that substantially for every single school in the state of South Carolina. It says right here, outright, that we cannot mandate masks or state funding is impacted. So just to note, 70% of our school districts salaries for our teachers are funded out of state funds, 70%. You may have heard in Florida that many superintendents have taken a stance and they said, hey, go ahead and take my salary and the governor there has threatened to take their salary. So I had a conversation with some superintendents and you know, we were thinking the same thing. Now my wife didn't know that, so don't, don't, <laughs> don't, don't tell her, she was just finding out with everybody else. But we contemplated that. The dilemma with that is, I can compromise my life, but I can't compromise the life of other folks. That's just not the issue. So I just announced last night at our board meeting that here's what Orangeburg is going to do. Face masks will be strongly encouraged for all students and staff throughout the school and work day. We're going to strongly encourage that. When I say strongly encourage that, if I see someone that doesn't have a mask on, man, I wish you would wear your mask. You don't have to, but I really wish you would. Come from the superintendent, that might. That might help you say, hey, you can do that. Second, face masks will be required. Now, I'm going to say required. And I underline that specifically on school buses. So you say, Dr. Foster, well, how can you do that? Well, the proviso says that it had state masks and not be mandated in school facilities. A school bus is not a facility. Mm -hmm. It's a school bus. So on a school bus, all employees and students will be required to wear a mask. Until they tell me or they give a bus an address, <laughs> it's not going to be a pursuit. Thirdly, face masks will be required for all visitors to any school, office, or on-campus event held during the school day. The proviso is silent to visitors. It says clearly, students and employees. So I assume, as my son would do, if he's talking to me, it has to be laid out. Because if you don't say it specifically, he's gonna find a loophole. <laughs> if they meant for it to be visitors, then they would have said everybody. But they said <laughs> students and teachers. In healthcare areas, you cannot mandate masks not be worn. 
Period. Correct? I'm glad you can't do some health care. I have nurses' offices in my school. If you go to the nurse's office and you, you're sick, you're going to put on a mask. If we have isolation rooms, you're going to put on a mask. But it also says if you're in transition or if you are waiting to be picked up due to being symptomatic or ill, you can be required to wear a mask. So in Orangeburg, if any of those things happen in our nurse's station, there will be a mask there for any child. And if a parent says, I don't want my child wearing a mask, when they go into the nurse's office, they're going to have to.